What a beautiful day. Do you know what that is over there? That's a library. And you know what's in libraries? Books! It's the sometimes vlog. It's a vlog that happens sometimes. Yes, this is the Monrovia Public Library. And in the library are books. Today, I am very excited. So excited, I didn't really know what to do with myself, which is why I drove all the way to Monrovia here, like an hour away from my house. Actually, there was a bunch of traffic, so it took even longer than that to get here from my house, just to be in this park, Library Park, in front of the Monrovia Public Library. And the reason is, well, it involves a little backstory. My mother taught me to love books. My dad, too, to a degree. They both read me books. They figured probably it was the only way to get me to sit still was to teach me to read good and so I was a great reader I could read when I was like four or five years old very very small I could read books and I started reading chapter books at a very young age and all this stuff always way ahead in high school like I already read the darn book I don't want to read chapter two with Jimmy over there reading all slow and whatnot books were just kind of my thing I love books like I said yesterday or whenever I have three books and I've read at least half of them anyway when I was young, I read a book called Tom Sawyer. My teacher, Mrs. Laird, in the fifth grade, gave me the copy of the book Tom Sawyer because she loved my performance as Huckleberry Finn so much. She said, Huck, you are believable, which is still the best compliment I have ever gotten from a teacher or anybody in my whole life. I loved the book Tom Sawyer, and that led me to start reading Huckleberry Finn, The Adventures of Huck well, Adventures, not The Adventures, <laughs> Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, over and over and over and over again through the years when I would travel the country and tour and cross the Mississippi River in my band, going over, well, I just said, across the country. Boy, sometimes I can't talk. I'm just too excited. I would always have a copy of The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, and I would read a little bit of it. I even have a Mark Twain tattoo on my arm. I've, of course, traveled to Hannibal, Missouri, Mark Twain's boy at home town and done vlogs there actually I think the second sometimes vlog ever was done in Hannibal Missouri and I started the sometimes vlog because I knew I was going on that trip and I wanted to share some of the trip I did a random land video there I've also visited Mark Twain's birthplace I've also done all kinds of crazy stuff involving Mark Twain and something very exciting has happened a little more backstory bear with me for a second then as I got older I was like well, no, Huckleberry Finn and all these books are so fascinating, such a sense of adventure. And I started to learn more about the man himself. So then I started getting into the history of the man, Mark Twain, who lived this super interesting lifestyle. He was probably America's like first rock star, his huge celebrity. But everywhere I would read anything about Mark Twain, before I started really reading biographies and stuff, I would just notice things saying he was a great humorist, he was really funny. Now, Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn, Tom Sawyer more than Huck Finn, but both those books have a little bit of like a sense of humor to them, but they're not particularly funny. So I was like, why does everyone say Mark Twain is funny? So I went back, found out what Mark Twain's first book was. It's called The Innocents Abroad. I've talked about this a lot. Even when I was in France, I went to the hotel he stayed at in Paris for The Innocents Abroad, and I bought it, and I read it, and it was the funniest book I ever read in my entire life. I literally laughed out loud. I don't think I had ever done that before from a book. Like being up at night, reading, trying to be all quiet, and reading this book and laughing out loud like a crazy person. I love, love, love this book. This vlog today is a little personal. That's why it's just pretty much you're just gonna look at my face, but I just wanted to tell you about these really exciting things. So I love this book. It made me very excited. I bought a, just like a little, the first copy I had of it was seriously like a dollar. Look, you can see all these people walking around enjoying Monrovia today here. Anyway, the first book I bought of it was uh, in Acres of Books in Long Beach. This old bookstore, paperback version. It was like a couple of cents. I read that book crazy until it started falling apart. I got better copies. I got better copies. And then I started to learn about Mark Twain the man and I read about how his first book really came together and how he had to like put it together from all these letters that he had written on this cruise and the Innocence Abroad is a book about going overseas for the first American kind of like luxury cruise they went to Europe and they looked all over Europe and then they went to the Holy Land Palestine Jerusalem they looked at all these crazy places and it was the first real American perspective on Europe and the Holy Land where he wasn't just like isn't this neat isn't this wonderful he was like this is dumb like some of the stuff, like this is dumb, can never make these French people understand their own language. Like really, really funny. I don't want to spoil it for you. It's super, super funny and super, super good. So I've always loved this book. But as I was reading about Mark Twain putting together this book and arguing back and forth with the publisher and it took forever to get this book out. He wrote it in 1867. It wasn't published till 1869. That's two long years of going back and forth over illustrations and different things. I kept wanting a copy 
of the book as it originally appeared, like a first edition sort of thing where like I wanted the one that Mark Twain looked at because he spent all this effort and time on the illustrations of the book. A lot of the text refers to pictures and different things and I never saw them. So I always wanted a version with the original illustrations. So then I got like a modern I know this is boring for some of you, but I don't even care. I got a modern copy of it that had plates, like copies of the original illustrations and I read that and that was pretty cool. But always for the past 10 years, I've gone on eBay and looked at first editions or early editions. Like, first edition means the first time they printed a book, right? So like the very, very first time they printed the very, very first copies of like say Harry Potter or something like that, that's the first edition. But then they take those same printing plates and they make more copies that are look exactly the same, they feel exactly the same, they have the same covers, the same pages and all that stuff, but they weren't necessarily the first printing, you understand? But it's still that same first book, it came out the exact way it came out when it first came out, all that kind of stuff. So that's what I was looking for. It's just one that looked like exactly like the one, came from the same publisher, the same printing plates as one Mark Twain would have seen in his lifetime, right? So for t for 10 years, I have been bidding on eBay. They always start around 20, 30, 40 bucks, and I've been bidding on them every single time I see one for 10 years. And they always go up to three or $400. So I always put in like the first bid and then I quit. 10 years has gone by, 10 long and lonely years. This is, I started about in 2005 or 2006 doing this. And I have, like if you were to be able to look at my eBay history, I have bid on hundreds and hundreds of these things. And finally, it came to my very literal amazement. I finally put in a bid. I think this one was $20. I put in a bid for 30 and I won. And not only did I win this book, but I actually also won a second one that I had bid on that I knew I would lose both. And there's another one on the way. But that's, I don't know what I'm gonna do about that, but that's neither here nor there. Look, finally, I have a copy of The Innocence Abroad or The New Pilgrim's Progress, The New Pilgrim's Progress, as it was called by Mark Twain, with the original front piece and illustrations. This thing is huge and thick and fat. Look at the size. Look at the size of this book. It's like an old Bible. Now this is a copy printed in 19, I forget, 1902 or something. So just, just after Mark Twain's death or right around the time of his life. And these books were not sold in a bookstore. At the time Mark Twain first started his career, the average guy didn't buy books. The average guy had just started reading newspapers and the penny newspapers were becoming a thing and reading was just becoming cool. And so they didn't have bookstores the way they have them now. When they did have bookstores and people would go in to buy the books, they were usually fancy men, rich people and people with a lot of wealth and money. Books were kind of expensive. And then some enterprising entrepreneurial spirits in the United States of America got together and decided to sell books by subscription. So what that meant is people would go door to door with prospectus copies of books, usually with nothing inside of them at first before the book came out, and they would go, would you like to buy this book? It's a really funny book by so-and-so, and it's gonna come out soon, it's gonna be super handsome, there's gonna be gold lettering on the sides, and like three or 400 pictures, and you can super, super impress your friends. And that was kind of the way that publishers started getting people, like normal people, to buy books. Like, look, it's a fancy thing, you're gonna be able to pay now, we're gonna ship it to you later, you can do it on an installment plan, a payment plan, all this kind of stuff. And so that is how the average guy started reading books. Of course, it didn't last too long. This is more like a 50 year thing. And by the time this one was printed in, boy, those motorcycles were loud over there, right off Route 66, you'll have to pardon those guys. By the time this book was printed in like the turn of the last century, that was really kind of on the way out and books were, bookstores were becoming more common, that kind of thing. But that's why these original editions of Mark Twain stuff have so many pictures, so many very detailed illustrations which were made from photographs of his trip, which were made from postcards and photos of actual people that he knew. So when he would talk about somebody, even though he would use like a, a different name for them, he would give the engraver a picture of that person and they would base the character in the illustrations of the book off that person. So for me, I've always, this is like my favorite thing. Like, Star Wars is my favorite movie. This is my favorite book. I love this book as much as you love Star Wars if you're a crazy Star Wars fan or something like that. I want to go to the places in this book and when I go, when I have been to some of these places, like the one in France and stuff, I don't think, wow, I'm standing in Paris, the home of Napoleon, I think, Wow, I'm standing in Paris where Mark Twain came once. That's how big of a fan I am of this book. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a total fanboy when it comes to this. Anyway, because these books were sold by subscription, you had to have subscription agents. And inside of this book, I noticed this. Look at this, a stamp. Maurice W. Sheen, 
agent, Main Street Governor, New York. There's also very weirdly a date stamp in here and it's in several other places inside of the book. Not just the agent's name, but also this date right here. Look at this book, it's so old and it smells so good. So not only has my dream of owning one of the super early old school Mark Twain could have looked upon one exactly like this editions of this book come true at a super reasonable price, but it turns out that it may be stamped inside with one of the sales agents thing, which is a reference to that little piece of history. This is how Mark Twain got so popular, selling by subscription, because books that were published by publishers and put in bookstores back there were about very fancy subjects, or they had to be by Shakespeare, or they had to be like the Bible or something like that. And this was the common man for the first time writing as an American in sort of common language and being funny and kind of rude and irreverent about very touchy subjects back then and kind of stuff like Mark Twain was inventing the American voice in this book and selling it you know to the common man through the subscription this is a piece of history I am super stoked to have this and I'm so excited of course I had to share it with all of you which it may bore some of you to tears I'm sorry but you should totally read this book though it's super radical like if you're a reader at all I challenge you to read this book you can get it for free if you get a Kindle app or the Apple Books app if you have an iPhone or something like that you can download The Innocence Abroad or The New Pilgrim's Progress for free on your phone and read it for free. Anyway, I was so excited I had to show you. And who else can I show? What else can I do? Like I told you, I was so excited I didn't know what to do. I told everybody about it and they were all like, neat, you like an old book, good for you. So I knew that I had to come and show this to the one person who would really care, Mark Twain. Hey Mark, how's it going? It's been a while since we've talked. I know you're reading a book here. I know you're very busy. You're a big deal. I get that. I know, but you know I'm your biggest fan and I've just wanted to come and tell you I finally got one. I finally got one. The American Public and but publican, I'm sorry, excuse me. The American Publishing Company's edition of The Innocence Abroad or The New Pilgrim's Progress is what's what you, I'm sorry, I'm just so nervous, which is what you originally wanted to call it, of course, but then they didn't want to do it because they didn't want you to mock The Pilgrim's Progress. So they were like, what about The Innocence Abroad or The New, and then you did it and you wrote it and it was really good. And this is, it's funny, the part in there where you're like, is he dead? And then you're like, it's an Egyptian mummy. He's been dead for 3000 years. And you're like, but, but is he dead? Remember how like you had just met your future wife, Livy, and you were putting the letters of this into the book and then you were looking over the different plates and stuff and making sure it was cool with her and her family like hated you because you were like super way older than her and you were like a bum, like some weird creative guy and you were just like a writer and no one got it and you were just like, dude, but I'm gonna be the future. And then this became like a bestseller and you guys were married and you didn't publish this till you were 34. Mark Twain, the Lincoln of our literature, America's greatest author, didn't publish his first book till he was 34 years old. So it's kind of like never too late for anyone you can find your voice later in life and just like do stuff and Huckleberry Finn wasn't written till like way way later and that was a crazy good book with Jim and everything and then people didn't like the ending but the ending is really the most genius part because it's a whole metaphor for the reconstruction era and the failure of it and how we freed people but then we didn't treat them good and stuff we were like we were weird but then this book was so good and it was just like kind of like the first punk rock book ever and you were just so awesome and then you like ran around and I like when you were a minor in Virginia City and it was just really cool I just really liked it. Mark? Uh, anyway, I know you're really busy. I just thought you'd be excited. I just wanted to show you. Drove an hour just to come and see it and show you. But I know you got some reading to do and everything and you're a busy guy, but I love you. Love you, Mark. Gotcha, got your back over here. You're my homie forever, number one. Oh my gosh, I'm shaking. I totally showed Mark my book and I barely even fangirled at all. I kept it cool. I just love you so much. Oh, oh, you're hot, hot, you're hot. Now, if he'd have asked me, I would have autographed his book, but he's gone. Home to sleep well. <laughs>